Hello everyone, it's me, Juan Gamer 54 back in the video today, today, you see the title, we're gonna go back and watch the Alex Bale 4 hour marathon video, well the 4 hour long video, the compilation, and we're gonna be talking, about, and we're gonna be tackling the television theory as well as one extra bonus theory at the end. So, we're just gonna stop talking really, cause uh, this is gonna be a long video, so uh... Take a seat, relax your back, have some food and popcorn, and uh, let's go! The show SpongeBob SquarePants is not what you think it is. Nani? There is a secret group of puppet masters who are always wait, watching wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 uh. The show SpongeBob SquarePants is not what you think it is. There is a secret group of puppet... Okay, it's a don't feed the muse fun fact. Uh, we are going to tackle the original ones so we can get more about the muse video because, you know, we do want to see that. But uh, anyways, uh, the man with tentacles coming out of him was the first don't feed the muse foreshadowing in this theory. At this point, I had an idea to turn these videos into ARG web series. But I didn't want to fully commit to it until I, after I knew this second season could perform well like the first one. There are 17 facts about this Masters in this video. Okay. Watching the citizens of Bikini Bottom and pulling the strings. Hidden within Bikini Bottom are spies that keep an eye on the characters and make sure everything goes to plan. This is a conspiracy that will fundamentally change the way you look at the show SpongeBob SquarePants. Really? And I believe it's all actually intended by the creators. All right. I'm gonna prove it. This is the television theory. All right. So let's watch it. To start this theory, we have to go back to the very beginning of the very first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. All right. Ah, the sea, so fascinating, so wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life, home of one of my favorite creatures, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple. You silly. So let me ask you a question. Who's speaking in this clip? Narrator. Well, Obviously, that's just the narrator. We hear his voice many times throughout the show. Ah, uh, Goo Lagoon. A stinky mud puddle for you and me. Ah, uh, the crusty crab. Through these doors pass all the many kinds of undersea life. Puff's boating school. Mrs. Puff's boating school. Students learn the rules of the road. But who exactly is the narrator? Well, he's just the narrator, right? We're not supposed to think about who he is or why we're hearing him. Lots of shows have narrator framing devices we're not supposed to think about. Uh-huh. Caillou was amazed that Mommy had made a rainbow, just like in the picture. Oh, uh, okay, There's so Caillou does have an universe, okay. He sounds a lot like he's narrating a nature documentary. The ocean. From above, a simple blanket of water. But below, a complex world full of color, life, and wonder. Oh, yeah, true. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life. What if I told you that he's not just some random disembodied voice? He's an actual character in this universe. Really? Here we are again at the Bikini Bottom boating school. Today is once again the day of SpongeBob's boating school exam. But more importantly, this is the last test for the year. Okay. And if SpongeBob does not pass this one. It means another whole year of birthday school! Oh! Aww. SpongeBob literally crashes into the fourth wall, and we actually get to see the narrator and the character. Oh, uh, his program. thing is the off. So, SpongeBob SquarePants is not just a cartoon. Everything we see is a part of a nature documentary uh, television Scooby show being Scoob filmed by Scuba, Scuba Divers. Mask. Hey, Alex from the future here. It is kind of weird that the Scuba Diver seems so small here compared to most humans we see in the show. Uh, uh -huh. I go into this a little more at the end of the theory, but we know humans have access to shrinking technology. So oh, yeah, we did have this reaction, so... Shrunk themselves down to film the show. Check out and the playlist. We actually, I'm making a playlist really, right now. Really it should be in the link in the channel. Uh, link to the playlist in the, the pin comment or in the description box. Land-loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. The name of this miraculous place? Bikini Bottom. 
Poring over the mass of brainy masterminds scattered about this strange land, the scientists chose six Bikini Bottom residents at random to study. As the scientists right. marveled at the advanced knowledge and superior intellect of these six creatures, I went to college! They rolled ha. their cameras and took notes. I and went to now, college, finally, Eugene. Why am I make playing sound like Mr. Krabs? Have to teach us. Life lessons from Bikini Bottom. I don't know how it can get any more clear than that. Now, if you rewatch the show with this new information in mind, some things start to take on a whole new meaning. Throughout the series, there's this weird, unexplained running gag of a human hand interfering with the characters. It's even in the beginning of every episode in the intro for the show. Maybe the filmmakers are doing a bit more than just studying these characters. Uh -huh. The hand seems to mostly interfere just to maintain the health and safety of the characters, like treating SpongeBob for the suds. Well, Mr. Squarepants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Oh, Hans! Hans! that the filmmakers wouldn't want to risk the safety of their main character. After yeah. all, there's no show without Spongebob, but that's not the only reason why they interfere. Season 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous for having one of the most absurd, confusing endings in the entire show. It Wait, what? The real gorilla, subtle 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous for having one of the most absurd... I called it infamous because it's used in the Doug Hover skin theory video which is a big inspiration for me wanting to try my hand in Spongebob theories. Oh nice! Confusing endings in the entire show. It ends with a real gorilla suddenly coming out of a Patrick costume and attacking the characters. A real gorilla? Soon as SpongeBob begins to question the logic of the scene, this happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? Huh? Now, uh, well, it, it's funny you should. I mean, the, see the George, they're onto us. I remember this episode. Let's get out of here. And it, it's still crazy to the, this day. I was like that, yeah, me too. SpongeBob is a weird show, but this has always stuck out as being just a little too weird. But knowing what we know now, I think I can explain what's going on here. This isn't a real gorilla. Every other live yeah, animal it, underwater wears a helmet and is drawn in a cartoony style. The gorilla is shown in a live action style, and the only time we ever see live action characters is when they're human. Yeah. So I believe both the gorilla and the horse he rides away on are humans wearing costumes. The filmmakers set this whole thing up just to make the episode more entertaining. All it's right. starting to seem like this isn't strictly a nature documentary anymore. It's more of a reality TV show. A cash for entertainment. Grab. Who knows what other absurd elements of the show are actually put there by the filmmakers to make the show more entertaining and profitable. Although, based on the people's reaction, it doesn't always seem to pay off. No. But how far will the filmmakers go to make the show more profitable? Um... Saturday morning in Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob is watching his favorite Saturday morning show, The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, enjoying a bowl of Mermaid Man oh, and advertisement. Boy Land cereal, and wearing the official Mermaid Man and Barnacle, Barnacle Boy breakfast fighters. If we think of this as a television show, this sounds an awful lot like a product placement. So yeah. Listen to how the narrator specifically says the full names of the products. The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy Bland Cereal. Mm -hmm. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy Breakfast Fighters. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mo Cocoa drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper Almost slope of Nicaragua. Almost call this the true man theory. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Maybe the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy TV show is actually from the surface world. They are human after all. Yeah. It makes sense that the filmmakers would choose to highlight these popular superhero characters. The more they show, the more they're going to sell Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy merchandise. Uh -huh. Also, Mermaid Man's old team of superheroes is referred to as a subsidiary of Viacom. The International really? Justice League of Super Acquaintances. A subsidiary of Viacom. And Viacom at the time was the company that owned Nickelodeon, which owns Spongebob. So that's oh. just more proof that Mermaid Man is directly working. Working for the showrunners. Hang on a second. Why are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the same size? I didn't know that. But yeah, that does make 
Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that there was the episode where, like, Barnacle Boy turned heel on my man's Mermaid Man just because, you know, he was tired of being called Barnacle Boy. He wanted to become Barnacle Man on some Robin stuff. But, I mean, like, I, I knew that there was basically a SpongeBob Justice League, essentially. Or I guess Super Friends is more accurate because, you know, Robin showed up in the Super Friends. Y yeah. ...of a fish in Bikini Bottom, even though humans are always shown as massive compared to fish. Uh, wh whatever, I'll, I'll come back to that one later. The show doesn't even just hide product placements. In the episode Model Sponge, they literally trick SpongeBob into making a commercial for a human product. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Director. Lose the pan! Oh, yeah, I think I remember in the original, like, it was... Sponge commercial. Take one. Your bathroom. Yeah, I, I remember. It, it, in the... In the original theory, uh, Alex Bale had to make statics because of copyright. So it's great to see it non, not have that. It is a disaster. Get it cleaned up fast with the new Sponge. Just look at that shine. This is just like in real life how SpongeBob is such a popular character that he's used to sell tons and tons of products. Yeah. So far I've shown you that the show SpongeBob SquarePants is actually a documentary television show, but the creators continually interfere to push their own agendas and make more money. But that brings us to an important question. Do the characters know they're in a television show? Let's go I back mean... to that clip where SpongeBob hits the cameraman. It means another whole year of birthday Spongebob, you just struck another pedestrian. This is Puff Calls another a marine pedestrian, pedestrian huh? which sounds more like she thinks he's just some random bikini bottom citizen. The different types of marine life in Spongebob are so diverse and weird looking that it's not too hard to And we keep seeing new ones too. These filmmakers are another weird type of fish. And back to the gorilla episode, the gorilla and the horse immediately get nervous and run away when Spongebob questions what's going on. Now... <sighs> Well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see that the, George, they're onto us! <laughs> Let's get out of here. Almost like the creators don't want the characters to be aware their lives are being interfered with. Yeah. Now, there isn't a ton of footage of the characters interacting with the filmmakers, but I dug really, really deep and found the smoking gun that answers all of our questions. Really? This is an old commercial from 2004 made to promote the Spongebob movie. Oh, 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 no, no, that wasn't. Oh, my it's God, I'm stupid. A it's a I'm a goofy goober, yeah. Hey, guys, it's Carlos from the zone. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Questions? Run for your lives! No, Pat, don't you see? It wants to learn about our world, and it's chosen us. What? Yay! <laughs> We've been chosen. A submarine comes down to SpongeBob and Patrick to ask questions to promote the new movie. SpongeBob and Patrick are clearly confused by this and think the submarine is some kind of alien. They also have no idea that they're the stars of a movie. Well, thanks guys. We'll see you in the movie. Bye. It's flickering for some movie. reason. What's that? I know. I think it's pretty clear at this point that the characters are unaware their lives are being filmed and interfered with. But there are some characters that have to have some level of awareness. For example, the doctor fish that told the human hand to treat SpongeBob, and the director fish that directed the commercial for the human world. Uh -huh. What makes these characters so special? First off, the director fish isn't actually from Bikini Bottom. Before he directed this commercial, we saw him as a citizen of New Kelp City in the episode Whatever Happened to SpongeBob. Uh -huh. All the characters they could have used, they specifically chose a character from out of town. Almost like the filmmakers didn't want to use anyone in Bikini Bottom so they wouldn't risk everyone finding out about the television show. Then there's the So does that mean like every other town that is in underwater know that they were in a TV show or is it just like just New Kelp City? Like is New Kelp City the ops? Uh, I'm just asking. Like maybe we because let's be honest Spongebob is still going on to this day so I feel like they might introduce a new town. So, Segway asks, is every other town aside from Bikini Bottom know they're being used to help out to f watching new television? Is New Cup City and every other town except Bikini Bottom, like, know that they're filming f for the human world? Or, like, what? Like, what's going on here? We don't know where he originally 
Kuma came from, but he's an extremely suspicious character. Usually he's purple, but sometimes he's orange, sometimes he's purple with orange hands, sometimes he's a pirate, and he bears a striking resemblance to Dr. Manowar from the Jellyfish Convention. And now or he could be that man. <laughs> Dang. Why does he have so many different disguises and identities? What is he hiding? Okay, so this isn't directly related to the television theory, but I have something really interesting to say about this doctor. In what? season 14's Don't Make Me Laugh, we see the Dr. Fish wearing orange gloves. And I'm pretty sure this is like a super subtle reference to this one time that he randomly had orange arms in season 1. It's like they're trying to retcon this old animation mistake and give it an in-universe explanation. Uh. They also did this with Perch Perkins, a side character who's notoriously switched back and forth between having orange and purple skin throughout the entire show uh -huh. but in season 13 we get this close-up shot of him where we can see little smudges of purple makeup implying his inconsistent colors was always him just wearing makeup it's like the wow. are telling us that little details matter even things that are obviously just animation mistakes have explanations in the lore of this show okay sorry for the tangent i just thought that was really interesting Back that is interesting to say the least hidden throughout bikini bottom are spies like this who are aware they're in a television show and keep tabs on the main character and make sure everything goes to plan. There's so many suspicious characters in Bikini Bottom. Wait, 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 wait. I see another and I see another one. Make sure everything goes to plan. There's so many suspicious Mer many of the theories line up with or first out the plot of Don't Feed the Muse. Some of this was intentional, some of them were happy accidents. Okay, so some were happy accidents. The hot dog vendor, old man Jenkins, it could literally be anyone. Some people have pointed out that there's this scene with Patrick that could be implying he is a self-aware spy. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. But since this is the only example of anything suspicious... There is a lot of random one-off fourth wall break jokes in the show. I think the burden of proof for being a spy needs to be high, or at least literally anyone else could be seen. Patrick, I think it's a little more likely that he's just too stupid to understand what he's doing here. But what if I told you that the biggest spy of all isn't some random side character? It's one of the main characters of the show. Someone who's been there from the very beginning. Someone who's not even from Bikini Bottom. It's Sandy. Someone who's not even from the ocean. That's right. Sandy Cheeks. Sandy Cheeks is the thrill-seeking scientific squirrel from Texas who lives underwater in her tree dome. Yeah. But why did she come to Bikini Bottom? In the episode Chimps Ahoy, we find out she was hired by a group of chimpanzees to come underwater and create inventions. But why does she need to be underwater to make inventions? Yeah. She could have just as easily made any of her inventions on land. It must be extremely expensive to maintain right. a giant dome of air underwater. And it has to be quite difficult, too. I mean, like, how can you make, you know, how can you make, you know, a glass underneath the water? Like, how can you make a tree dome in the water? Do you have any idea how much water you have to let it out? There is no way the only reason she's here is to make random inventions. I think this whole episode is an elaborate ruse to throw off the other characters from the real reason Sandy is in Bikini Bottom. To spy on the main characters and make sure the show stays on track. Alright. Many of the times the characters are in danger, Sandy conveniently steps in to save the day. And many of the wacky, entertaining episode plots are driven by an invention Sandy creates. Uh -huh. Everything she does is a calculated move to carry out the hidden agenda of the film. Filmmakers. Her entire friendship with SpongeBob and the other characters is built on a lie. Oh but my you're god. Probably saying, Sandy is a sweet, friendly squirrel. There's no way she's behind this. You're not convinced yet? That's okay, because what I'm about to show you is so mind blowing, so insanely revealing, that it's actually the whole reason I decided to make this video. Get ready for the big one. Yeah. Season 10, episode 10, Feral Friends, is the episode that unlocks this entire mystery. Okay. During a birthday party, a green moon suddenly appears and turns everyone except Sandy into less evolved, real-life versions of themselves. Sandy Again, I haven't watched this episode. This decides to call someone for help. And take a guess who she calls. Who? Hello, Frenchie? Frenchie? Hi, Frenchie. It's oh. Of the green moon all day. 
yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. Yeah. Holy sh**, Sandy literally called the narrator to let him know what's going on and ask for instructions on what to do next. She has been working with him the entire fucking time. Hey, yo, calm down, brother. You haven't been controlled. You didn't even that. You haven't been confused, been controlled by the muse yet. My mind is just blowing up. My mind is just exploding, dude. This is this is crazy. Many people have commented about this, but there has been a major, major new development for this. Sandy is a spy theory. What? In the brand new SpongeBob movie. Another one? Jeez, how many SpongeBob movies are there? I mean, okay, we got the spun the first SpongeBob movie, which is classic. Okay. Then we got Spongebob Sponge Out of Water, which was, I mean, honestly, I kind of like it. Uh, then we got, like, S Snail on the Road, or Snail on the Run, which I haven't seen. And now there's a Netflix one, which is about Sandy Cheeks. Okay. Bikini Bottom, we basically get outright confirmation of this theory. Like, it's not even up for debate anymore. The movie reveals Sandy has been working for human scientists this entire time. And what? This. The reason I'm back in Texas is because Bikini Bottom. Uh, weren't that the town you were spying on? I weren't spying. I was uh, um, doing observations. Direct confirmation. Ob Bruh, <laughs> come on. You could have just stayed with the line then, you know, like, I was sent there to do inventions because of the chimpanzees. That Sandy is a spy three years after I posted my television. Yo, I'm doing something great another human villain. Nah, exposed in front of the whole squad. You even got Squidward so upset. Nah, this can't be. Sandy, no! It does seem like she didn't know the full extent of what was happening. I didn't know that you were using me to spy on Bikini Bottom. And also, it's never outright said that the humans are using them for a secret TV show. It's actually more about using them to create merchandise in the plot of this movie. But we do get confirmation that they've always been filming them, and that the human company that Sandy works for was recently bought out by a different company, which explains why they're focusing more on merchandise in this movie rather than a TV show. You have reached Moots Laboratories, now a division of Gushing Waters Waterparks, and future home of Sea Pals. Either way, I'm going to take the W. This theory aged very, very well. You know, it's... <sighs> Spongebob, I'm not going to lie. You might have to dump Sandy. You might... <laughs> All right. We might have to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm about... All right. I know what I'm going to say. It sounds crazy. But everyone, gather around with me. Sandy Cheeks, you have been proven to be guilty... Um, basically your whole friendship with everyone in Bikini Bottom to be false. So there is only one thing that we can be saying. Everyone, put your hands together. From the streets she emerged, and to the streets she shall re To the streets she shall um, return. <laughs> That's crazy! This is where I originally planned on ending the video, but there is still one small issue with the television theory. Just one nagging plot hole that contradicts everything. If this is all a television show filmed by Can't scuba believe. divers, From the then she how are we seeing the inside the building? Return. It's not like any of the humans filming the show could fit inside them. It's the one annoying uh, thing we found that another it's one. It's not like any of the humans filming the show. Actually, if they're using the shrinking tech, that they then they probably could. Honestly, any impossible shot you can think of can be saw by one of Sandy's inventions. Yeah, because apparently she's a snake now. Being complete. I mean, the most logical explanation is that they have hidden cameras inside of everyone's homes, but we never really see anything like that. Yeah. Holy shit. Season 6, episode 24, Truth or Square. The SpongeBob Ah, uh, yes, the episode the that kind of. The characters. But the most damning piece of evidence <sighs> that we, uh. The characters get lost in the Krusty Krab vent Let's just say we had a bad experience with it last, last episode. Oh! My house is on TV! All of our houses are on nah, TV! Nah, you was moving away too, Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs. 
Pops. Why do you have cameras watching us? <laughs> no, but, uh, I just want to make sure you all floss after every meal. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Dental hygiene is very, very important. Dental hygiene? Eugene, you lying bastard. <laughs> of course he would sell out his friends for a quick buck. And if there's any part of you that thinks there's some chance Mr. Krabs has all these hidden cameras for some other reason, then take a look at what happens next. He even got one for Plankton. I think it's us, Patrick. But who are they? Patrick? Whoa! <laughs> They're not even trying to hide That's it. That's crazy. That is crazy. All right, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. A cameraman and a boom operator have been following around the characters this entire time. And just like the gorilla, as soon as they get seen, they make a run for it. Okay, so obviously in the new Sandy movie, Mr. Krabs sort of acts surprised and betrayed by Sandy being a spy. Which kind yeah. of makes it seem like he's not a spy. But think about it. If you were Mr. Krabs and a fellow spy's cover was just blown, you're not just gonna confess that you are also a spy. You're obviously gonna play along and pretend like you didn't know anything. Dang. I don't think this really disproves anything here. Also, if this is the fake imaginary Mr. Krabs, then he probably wouldn't even know Sandy was a spy. Yeah, that, that would make sense. So, I mean, like, still, though, I mean, that's horrible what we just discovered, like, on the last time, last time on this whole thing where we talk about the imagination theory. If you haven't checked that video out, it's in the playlist. I'll have the, play, the link of the playlist, like, in the description box. So that way you can watch both the old versions as well as this new current one that we're doing. But, god dang. Let's just say it was dark, and we still, we're not even done yet. The television theory is something the show has consistently alluded to from the very first episode to the newest episodes. Maybe one day the show will actually directly address it, and our characters they really will did address the real it. truth about their world. But regardless, Good job, Alex Bale. Theory, Good job. You, you called it. Well, well, hang on a second. You thought I forgot about the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy thing, didn't you? Okay, here's a quick bonus theory. Oh yeah, I, I guess this one already kind of had a bonus mini theory. Uh, I'll still do a new proper mini theory after this, so so don't worry. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. <laughs> You're giving us two, two bonus theories. Oh, we eating good today. Whether or not they actually did this or it was all staged for television isn't clear, but they both spent their lives underwater until they became old and retired. But after yeah. spending so much time under the sea, they no longer fit in with human society. Plus, Mermaid Man is clearly dealing with some form of dementia and PTSD from fighting evil. Yeah. But you can't retire. There's evil afoot. <laughs> <laughs> So they decided the to live the rest of their lives on the and in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision to shrink themselves using Mermaid Man's shrinking belt. The case is closed. Again. Man. These theories are they're 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 crazy, man. I don't know where he comes up with it. I don't know how he finds it, but the man <laughs> Alex Bale is a SpongeBob he is demon. On, I believe all of it. How does it hold up? I think it's, it has to be number okay, one. I'm just going to say it right now. The television theory is the best Spongebob theory. I it is. Like, like, it's not even close. If you were to ask me if any of my theories it, it were actually it's intended basically been by the confirmed. Creators, I'd definitely say the television theory. There is just so much evidence that this was actually planned from the start, and now three years later, there's a movie that's directly confirming it. This theory literally changes everything about this show, and it's so big that I end up using it in almost all of my future theories. And I've got a bunch of new television theory-related discoveries inside of the coming mini theories too. Speaking Yay! Of which, Skeleton theory? So, there's this viral image that's gone around the internet that points out a really funny detail about this show. There seems to be a frightening number of miniature dead humans. Oh, yeah. SpongeBob. 
And it's a really funny observation, but it's also really strange because why are there a bunch of mini dead human skeletons in SpongeBob? <laughs> like the animators already have a generic design for a yeah, human they, skeleton. The... Why are they going out of their way to make these human skeletons? They're obviously much more detailed and harder to draw. And this is something we see in both early and modern SpongeBob. Really? I think the television theory actually provides a pretty good explanation for this. Oh, we know there's tons of don't human tell me. Secretly filming the show and it even looks like some of them are fish sized and we know there is shrinking technology in this show so they are like the, I've already the, said I think it's fair to assume that humans shrunk themselves down to better film these characters under there the, which explains why we see so recording many tiny crew. human skeletons the There's stage the crew, crew members who sadly passed away during the filming of Spongebob they yeah. are deep underwater after all it's not the safest place for humans to be and that's about all I had to say about this topic it's not actually that interesting I I probably wouldn't have even bothered making this separate mini theory because we already had a bonus a theory very interesting piece of spongebob history that was recently made public what the original spongebob pitch bible the document created by steven hillenberg in 1997 to pitch the show to nickelodeon was just recently finally made available to the public what is full of fascinating early ideas and concepts wait was that patrick but what's interesting to me is that move back move back move back early ideas and concept Nickelodeon was just recently finally made available to the public and it is full of okay that's interesting welcome to the chum bucket and Patrick looks like he was working there I'm not sure if that was his whole gimmick like I'm not sure if Spongebob and Patrick that it's interesting really like what happens if you're friends but you're both working in rival companies like like is Mr. is this some sort of like some funniest, some funny, like out of out of pocket Romeo and Juliet sort of thing. Like Sponge, like Patrick and like Patrick and SpongeBob are best friends, but Plankton and Mr. Krabs don't want them hanging around each other because they are both, you know, working in rival companies. Fascinating early ideas and concept art for the show. But what's interesting to me is that much like the show itself, the pitch bible is presented like a fictional in-universe report from a team of deep sea divers discovering Bikini Bottom for the first time. Really? An afternoon ascent into the deep crystalline gulf, which plummets from the island's coral base, reveal the natural wonder which had so long eluded the eyes of mankind. We had indeed found Sponge Boy. Which was the Sponge original Boy. name for Spongebob. Oh. Before us, glistening in the glow of our dive lamps, sat a submerged treasure unlike any other in the world. We were afforded a first-hand glimpse into the character of Sponge Boy and his world. It's crazy that even the pitch bible for this show has lore. If this doesn't prove the television theory, I don't know what does. But yeah, it's basically confirmed. No one is denying this it now. bible that I always thought was a little strange. On page 12, there's a dedication section. Dedication? It describes one of the first expeditions to Bikini Bottom taken by a deep sea diver named Bucky Leavitt using a new and untested diving suit, which ultimately imploded oh, no. from the undersea pressures. Bucky died making the only known map of Bikini Bottom. It is to Bucky and his pioneer spirit that we dedicate this research. It's kind of a strange thing to include in a pitch for a kid's show, of all things. The story seems to be inspired by Benjamin Leavitt, the inventor of the suit shown in this photo, uh -huh. but there's no record of him ever dying during an expedition. So it seems like this story about Bucky was completely made up just to add more lore to the show. So it then begs the question, if he is a character in this universe, where is Bucky's body? I don't want to know. Could possibly be one of the human skeletons we've seen throughout the show? Well, we know Bucky died in his old prototype diving suit, so I think his body would probably still be inside of it. So, the real question is, do we know of any diving suits in Bikini Bottom? Uh, and yes, we do. Really? We see it almost every episode. No! SpongeBob's television. SpongeBob's TV is clearly supposed to be an old diving suit helmet, but it's strange because it's so small compared to diving suits we've seen worn by other humans. No. So either this diving suit is from a shrunken human, 
or it's been compressed down to a smaller size by the pressures of the sea. No. Just like we even see SpongeBob's TV design was a part of the original Pitch Bible. I think there's a very good chance that this is no. supposed to be at least the head of Bucky Leavitt. No. I think every time SpongeBob is watching TV, he's actually staring directly at a dead human skull. And if you don't that is horrible. Me, it's SpongeBob and Patrick fight over the TV and actually pull it apart. And for the very first time ever, we get a look inside. What's well, that? It's an extremely fast moment, but if you go frame by frame, you'll see that inside of SpongeBob. Oh TV, my God! Like skull. And that is skeleton theory. Rest in peace, Bucky. I, I, I'll just catch you guys next time. I, I, I gotta lay down.